Well, Clarence Hussein is a professor of political science at Howard University in Washington. He joins me now live. Thanks so much uh, for being with us. You know, in the lead up to the 2016 election, I remember being very hard pressed to find a single Republican who would just endorse Trump with any real enthusiasm. You know, they didn't consider him a real party member and admitted, uh, you know, that's why they would probably lose the 2016 election. Yet he won. And now most Republican lawmakers openly back him. So, I mean, can we even talk about defectors holding any real weight in the 2020 election? So thank you for, uh, for having me. So one of the things that really stands out is that it really wasn't Donald Trump that created the Republican Party. It's the Republican Party that created Donald Trump. He was able to exploit what had been years of a growing alienation from many in the Republican base who were fearful of demographic changes in the country uh, and other issues. And Donald Trump became the articulation for those grievances. And the Republican Party then dragged itself uh, behind Donald Trump. What we're seeing with a lot of the opposition, that's happening outside of the party. The Republicans for Biden, the Lincoln Project, these are all individuals who are not in the party circles. This is not an internal debate that's going on. And so it's absolutely true that there will be a reckoning if Donald Trump loses, but it's unclear how that will happen both inside of what's left of the Republican Party and then what happens with all of the individuals who have stepped outside of it. Right. I mean, it's amazing, though, you question what's really left of the Republican Party, yet whether he wins or loses, the legacy, you know, of his four, past four years in office uh, will leave the Republicans a very powerful party, uh, whether they intended to or not, just with the Supreme Court nominations, for example, now having a supermajority. Um, but let me ask you, I mean, in, in the election, you know, less than a week from now, do you think any of the let's say senators in particular, will actually pay a real price for having flip-flopped on their support uh, for President Trump. Someone like, you know, Senator Lindsey Graham, for example. So it's pretty clear that a lot of the party will distance itself immediately if Trump loses. And they will suddenly become, who knows Trump, never heard of him, don't know where he lives, never, never saw him at all. But in fact, there's a record. And so Lindsey Graham and a number of the Republicans who had tied their fortunes to Donald Trump now have to see whether or not that Donald Trump base will be there uh, for them. Uh, Donald Trump has been one fear, but it's also been a fear of Donald Trump's base and that you would see pro-Trump candidates run against anyone in the party who spoke out against Donald Trump. What we're seeing though, with Lindsey Graham and a number of other uh, Senate candidates, but also in congressional uh, House races around the country, that the opposition is not from other Republicans, but actually from Democrats. And just as in 2018, there was a blue tidal wave, and the uh, Democrats uh, did not just win the House of Representatives, they wanted an outstanding uh, numbers. And so that's a lot of the fear for some of those who are left in the Republican Party now, is that they will both have to contend with a base that was loyal to Donald Trump, but not necessarily to the Republican Party mm. and an energized uh, Democratic Party. Okay. Uh, I'm going to change uh, approach here a little bit because I want to get your opinion on how you see the results of this election actually unfolding. Are we going to know who will be the next president of the United States on November 3rd or even November 4th? Uh, possibly. Uh, the key states to look at on election night will be Florida, North Carolina, uh, in particular because both of those states will be reporting early. And as most analysts uh, uh, argue, and I tend to agree, if Donald Trump loses in Florida, he has almost no path to victory because that what that indicates is not only a, a sweep going on in Florida, but probably it means then Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania uh, are all going in his direction. And in fact, he could still lose, uh, Biden could still lose Pennsylvania uh, and still win the election. So we could possibly know. Uh, the problem will be if the Democrats
Democrat, if the Republican Party decides to immediately start to file lawsuits, uh, there will be uh, injunctions. And the uh, networks have pretty much agreed that unless there is clear evidence, they will not make an announcement. So unless there is a real sweep, uh, it's doubtful that we will know that night. But it is possible. There could be uh, such a wave of votes uh, on the Democratic side that it becomes really clear uh, that Donald Trump cannot win, uh, regardless of what happens uh, when we go further west with the election results. Mm. And that's the stuff I'm talking about, though, those injunctions and, and challenges. I mean, how complicated could it get? Very complicated. Uh, as as um, many of the listeners know, uh, the Supreme Court decision uh, regarding Pennsylvania was essentially to allow, and this is went back and forth, but to allow uh, votes that come in by election day, but that are not counted election night to still be counted uh, within a certain number of days afterwards. Now, there are indications from conservatives on the Supreme Court that they may revisit that, and we could see an unprecedented decision where they decide that votes that are counted after midnight on election day in Pennsylvania are not to be uh, recognized. That would be a revolutionary uh, political and electoral uh, stance. And so we could see something along those lines. But again, if there is a, a, a humongous turnout uh, on the Democratic side, it could beat back some of those challenges because if the numbers just are the numbers, uh, then there's not a lot of space uh, for uh, Donald Trump and his uh, legal team uh, to make the case. The right. other thing is that it's a state-by-state -state decision. There, We do not have a national election in that sense. So mm. each state would have to be uh, litigated. Okay, Clarence, oof. we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much uh, for being with us from Washington. We appreciate it.